Good evening and welcome inside King Arena. We're going to heat things up tonight with CCIW basketball as the Wheaton Thunder host the Carroll Pioneers in the first game of the 2018 portion of the schedule. Alongside Tim Martin, I'm Rusty Lindsay. Thanks for tuning in to the Wheaton Thunder Sports Network here for tonight's action. Tim Wheaton comes off an impressive two-game swing up on the West Coast. They, they knock off then undefeated in seventh-ranked Whitworth, giving them their first non-conference home loss in 30 games. It was the nation's longest streak at the time. Then they go down, they have a lead, they blow it, they come back late to beat George Fox. Mm -hmm. It's a 2-0 trip. They've been off since Christmas. There's a lot to like with what we saw from the Thunder out west. It really is, Rusty. I mean, here, the last game at King against Alma, one win, one win, Alma comes in here and wins. It was kind of a low point for the season. Then you go out west, a place that's really been difficult for Wheaton in recent years, and they beat. They have those two huge wins. They kind of saved the season. If you lose those two games and come back here six and five, things are really looking bad. But they they really summoned some energy. They they found some resolve. You know, when you face that kind of adversity, you see what you're made of, and they really showed they're made of some really uh, strong stuff out west. Maybe the biggest thing we saw was even including the Alma game. Wheaton out rebounded their opponents the last three games, including the Alma game. And we heard Mark Schauer talk about it. He put his team through an in a very difficult practice before the Whitworth game. Decided to hang his hat on the fact that we've got to get some grit back in our team. And it really showed it in those two wins, especially down the stretch against George Fox. You've got to give Coach Shower a lot of credit to do that, to, to put the team through the ringer there. But they responded. So, you know, this team was kind of at the bottom of the deepest valley, Rusty, and now they're starting to work their way back up. And it's worked, and now you have a chance here looking at Carroll, looking at North Park. You have a chance to really get some good things going. You heard Coach Shower coming off the trip. He said, we're at par for the season. We took a bogey in the loss to Alma. We got a birdie with the win at Whitworth. So he kind of likes where they're at. This is probably where they would expect to be at 8-3 and three coming into tonight's game. We will set things up with the Carroll side of things. They're coming off a little bit of a West Coast swing, too. A one and one showing at the D3Hoops.com Classic in Las Vegas. Right now, we'll send it across the floor to Mr. Pugsley over there for the announcement of the starters in the National Anthem. Starting lineups for tonight's game. First for the visiting Pioneers of Carroll University. Number 10, a 6'2 junior from Plainfield, Illinois, Troy Howitt. Number 22, a 6'3 senior from South Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Tanner Zeski. A 6'2 senior from Boston, Wisconsin, number 23. Joel Heesh. Number 42, a 6'4 sophomore from Piatone, Illinois, Kale Maupin. And number 52, a 6'7 junior from Elk Grove, Illinois, Tyler Ingebrigtsen. The Pioneers are coached by Paul Combs. Here are the starters for your Thunder from Wheaton College. Number one, a 6'1 junior from Tyler, Texas, Aston Francis. 
A 6'6'' junior from Flint, Texas, number five, Trevor Gunter. Number 22, a 6'3'' senior from Northfield, Illinois, Ricky Samuelson. A 6'8'' sophomore from Chicago, Illinois, number 25, Jay Spencer. And number 34, a 6'4'' junior from Medina, Ohio, Luke Peters. Wheaton is coached by Mike Schauer, assisted by John Panner and Shantae Gibbs. All right, there's tonight's starters. We mentioned with Carroll, one and one trip coming off the D3Hoops.com Classic. They had a, a tight loss to Augsburg, a five-point loss, and then a pretty sound defeat of Pacific Lutheran. For Carroll, this is a team that can really find it scoring a number of ways. It'll be the strength of the Pioneers if they can get four guys to ten points tonight. They have five guys that average nine points or more a game, so it's a very balanced scoring attack. They also don't have that go-to guy. Right, Rusty. It's going to be rare you're going to be in a college game where nobody on the team averages 10 points or more so they are balanced they're well coached they play good competition and they probably underachieved a little bit this year from where we thought they'd be but they're they're dangerous and they're going to be ready and uh, they played Wheaton really tough last year. Tyler Ingerbretson and Jay Spencer getting the start tonight. Jay had coming off his 16 rebound performance out west. That's a career best, and he wins the tip. Aston Francis, shot fake. First shot up along three, and Jay brings down the offensive rebound. Turns around with the right hand hook and knocks it in off the glass. If Jay Spencer can be assertive on the offensive end, it's a very tough Wheaton team to guard. Right. We, we need someone to score inside, and that was a nice move from Jay. It's Spencer, Gunther, Peter, Samuelson, and Francis for the Thunder. Howitt, Zeski, Heesh, Maupin, and Ingebretson for the Pioneers. Four and seven on the year. 0 oh and two in the CCIW. Wheaton eight and three, one and one. This is Howitt on the drive. Kick out, long two for Maupin, no good. And Jay Spencer again with the rebound for the Thunder. Luke Peters looking to push the tempo. Finds Francis. Aston's West Coast trip came with a lot of assists. He drops this one off to Peters. Kick out. Wide open three for Samuelson. Got it. Great start from Wheaton sharing the ball. Ricky has been so good this year. And Wheaton up 5-0 early. This is Heesh around the screen probing and kicks out another open three. This time it's Ingebretson rattles around and out. Gunter loses the rebound to Maupin. And Carroll will reset with a fresh shot clock. Just over a minute in, Wheaton leads 5-0. Strong drive by Zeski, no good, and again it's Ingebretz in the offensive board. Swing out, near side, Howitt for three from the left wing, that's no good, and finally Ricky Samuelson will end that pioneer possession. Peters rushing into the front court, runs into the back of Gunter, but will kick to the right wing. Samuelson thought about the three, and instead Wheaton settles into the half court set with Francis at the volleyball line. Sidestep, straightaway three ball, in and out, no good, and a rebound for Troy Howitt. Yeah, Carroll struggled from three this year, Rusty, and so far they've missed a lot of good looks. And you're seeing Wheaton in a little bit of a zone look as how it triggers a wide open three and connects. When you get a team like Carroll that has struggled from three, you can take some chances, loosen up the strings a little bit, play a little bit more zone defense, which we saw a little bit from the Thunder against Alma. Spencer holding on the right side all the way out on the right wing. 5-3 lead for the Thunder, first game back from break. Peterson hop, skipping a jump down the lane, and a blockout foul is going to be called against Kale Maupin as he clears out Jay Spencer, and that will be the first foul of the game against the other team. Yeah, Jay's so active early on the glass, they're having a hard time keeping him off. Jay's got an offensive rebound and put back, a defensive rebound. Is Zach Quam coming in, checking in uh, for Aston here early? I think what you're seeing there is, Wheaton had some foul trouble, especially with Francis in that George Fox team. They got great minutes from Zach Quam and Tyrell Derrick. And with the early shot selection, I think he's willing to, to trust his other guys here and send a message to, to Aston Francis for, to hone it in a little bit. 5-3 lead for the Thunder, fourth time down the floor on the offensive end. Samuelson kicks out to Gunter straight away as they look to post up Jay Spencer. And they do. Jay scored once from here. He kicks to Gunter in the lane. Gunter fading away, leaves it short. Long rebound, knocked out and grabbed by Ingebretson. And Carroll will look to equalize here as we're just shy of three minutes in. This is Heesh driving with the right hand, and we are tied at five. Yeah, this lineup for Wheaton now with Aston out does not have a ton of scoring. Really, they have to look for Ricky on the perimeter and uh, Jay Spencer inside. 
Luke Peters driving, had the pass tipped, but it gets his way to Zach Quam. Peters will come down the baseline, no good. Rebound is knocked loose, and it's going to be a foul against Trevor Gunter. See it on the replay here. Peters hit as, as the shot went up. And you see Gunter holding the left arm. I think it was Maup in there. Two subs into the game for Carroll. Wheaton will counter with Kobe Eichelberger. And Francis comes back in, taking out Gunter and Peters. So now Wheaton come back with Francis, back with Eichelberger. A lot more offense on the floor, and, and this line is probably going to be more potent. This looks like a much smaller group, too. Really running Jay Spencer's an athletic five. You really have Kobe Eichelberger working as the four. Great pass down low. Maupin tries the reverse. And another offensive rebound by the Pioneers. Into the lane. Heesh gets it. That's, me, that's Zesky. And Carroll very active on the offensive glass here tonight. Well, that can be an issue for this Wheaton team. We saw at West they were much better on the defensive glass. But if you're going to give the opponent second shots, as now we've got a Wheaton layup for Jay Spencer. Two more for Wheaton. Nice drop pass there, skipping to the opposite block to Spencer. He has four. We're tied at seven. Four minutes in here at King Arena. Kobe cuts off the baseline drive. Maupin will swing it near side, holding his Joel Heesh. Heesh around the high screen against Zach Quam. Great defense by Quam. Kicks out to Nick Penny, who gets his first touch. Three ball on the way, short, and Jay Spencer a strong rebound against Kale Maupin. That'll be Maupin second. And Ingebretson right back into the game. Luke Peters back into the game for Wheaton as he replaces Samuelson. We'll also see for the first time tonight Ryan Clary, the freshman out of Pewaukee, Wisconsin, checking in for the Pioneers. You're kind of surprised to see Ingebrigtsen at not just nine points per game and three rebounds. Last year, his numbers were better, and looks and he's only he's a junior. He was developing. He's really a solid player, so I'm not sure why his numbers are down. Nick Penny will harass Peters at the top as Eichelberger drives. A foul is called against Charlie Soule. Third foul already against the Pioneers, and again, the book on Eichelberger is to keep him from going to his right, so it still surprises you that this late in the year, you still see him so effective going to the right. But he does have some counter moves, and we saw at West, he's starting to score more. Wheaton needs that third score. If you have Francis, you have Samuelson, but Kobe's now up to 11 points again. Career high, 28 points against George Fox. A lot of that came on the back end of the Bruin press, but still a very coming off his best game as a member of the Thunder. Francis, way out beyond the arc, counted by Zeski. Three on the shot clock. He's going to have to huck it up from near half court. Oh, <laughs> almost got it to go. Loose rebound grabbed by Eichelberger and an easy putback. There are very few players, Rusty, that would even get that to the rim from there, let alone almost make it. 9-7 lead for the Thunder. They've scored the last four points. Bounced low to Ingebretson. Kick to the near corner. That's Clary. Clary around Eichelberger, and he throws it away to Luke Peters. Three on three on the break. Peters all the way to the bucket, lays it up and in. Oh, it looked like it was going to go, but it will not. And Luke Peters will go to the line for two. The foul against Tanner Zeski. Great help from Kobe on one end, and then Luke is really pushing the ball. He really looks fast tonight, giving Wheaton some fast break opportunities. Well, it was hampered by a little bit of a sprained ankle at the end of the going into the uh, I believe it was the Elmhurst game, and what did not seem to be quite the full, at full speed. But tonight, you said it really looks like he's opening up well and uh, trusting his feet a little bit. Yeah, and into the game also for Wheaton, Spencer Peterson, who was so big in that Whitworth game. Again, he's starting to rebound more and more. He's starting to score more inside. It's tough to come in here off of football and get your basketball legs, but I think he's getting them. Peterson at 16, and he went to the free throw line a lot down the stretch to put that game away. Ingebretson drives on Peterson, cut off, kicked it through the hands of Quam, and it will stay with the Pioneers. Samuelson back in the lineup here. He'll replace Quam. So Wheaton has, has cycled almost its full lineup already. And it's got full. Peterson on the floor with Francis Samuelson, Eichelberger, and Peters. Bounce pass into Ingebretson, working against Spencer Peterson. Layup no good. Nice job by Francis to hold off the defender. And now here come the Thunder. Eichelberger guarded by Soul gets it back to the top, and Luke Peters will dribble to the left hash. They set up the high pick and roll here with Spencer Peterson. Poked away. Samuelson will try the three, leaves it short. Peterson the rebound, and Wheaton 
will set up again here on the kickout. Kobe thought about the three, well closed on, and now here's Luke Peters. Dishes to P Peterson, nice. and he lays it up and in. Yeah, Luke, that, that first step looked so explosive, and Spencer Peterson kept that possession alive with the offensive rebound. Peterson hedges high on the pick and roll and then closes it out well with Ingerbretson and now it's out to the top for Howitt. 11-7 lead, Wheaton scored the last six points. Driving is Clary. Bounce pass, blocked by Eichelberger, but a foul will be called. And Charlie Soule will go to the line for two as Kobe Eichelberger picks up his first foul tonight. Yeah, actually Kobe, Kobe did everything right there. He helped, um, and, but yeah, it was actually Ricky just didn't quite get down for that help the helper situation. But uh, Kobe's done a nice job defensively. But you talk about Kobe's first step on offense as the free throws in. Because you've got Francis and Samuelson, teams have to guard them so closely. There's room for Kobe, even though they, they know how good he is going right. He does have some counter moves left, and he's still just such a good athlete. He can get to the rim. And if he starts making outside shots, he becomes really dangerous. Zeski and Heesh back in along with Anthony Marlowe, who we'll see for the first time. Charlie Soule at the line for the second of two after making the first. How it will, will round out this quintet here for the Pioneers. Gunter returns for Wheaton, giving Spencer Peterson a break. Francis on the right hash, guarded by Joel Heesh, has not scored yet tonight. Step back jumper. And trying to dump it down low to Luke Peters. Good defense by Merlot. And now pushing are the Pioneers with Troy Howitt. Bounce pass on the roll to Soul, and he threw it through the hands of Soul. That was coming from Anthony Marlowe. Just too much mustard on that pass from short distance and a turnover by the Pioneers. And you're seeing Carroll now, really, they're playing off of um, Trevor Gunter, they're playing off of Kobe Eichelberger. Th their men are in the lane helping while they're really hugging Francis and Samuelson and then uh, guarding the ball when it's Luke Peters. Kobe on the top of the key, driving to the right hand, trying to get down on Marlowe. Kick out to Peters at the free throw line and now Luke tries to drive, spinning into the lane with the left hand, deep and Zeski will clean the boards for the Pioneers. High pick and roll here from the Pioneers. This has been the crux of their offense so far. Spinning into the lane with the right hand and getting the roll is Joel Heesh. And Rusty, actually, Carroll's in a triangle and two right now. So they're guarding Aston and they're guarding Ricky. The other three guys are zoning up in a triangle. The first time I think Wheaton's seen this this year. It's not a defense you see a lot of as that's turned over by Gunter and taken by Zeski. Zeski will tee up the three from the wing. No good. Long rebound. Kick out to Zeski. He'll drive now. Layup no good. And rebound loose on the floor to Eichelberger. Some of it just has to come with diagnosing what they're doing to you defensively as Peters loses it on the way to the basket. And I think Wheaton missed Jay Spencer on the floor there. All of a sudden you saw the middle open up for Carroll because Jay's altered so many shots and he was getting so many rebounds. He's back now. Um, and they're going to, you know, against the triangle and two, I think you can screen for those two guys. There's a lot you can do. Um, and I, maybe get one more shooter on the floor as well. Three turnovers in the eight, first eight minutes for the Thunder. Two of them coming on the last three possessions. Neither team has scored off a turnover yet. As this is Heesh around the high screen. Great back cut and a better pass as Charlie Soule lays it up and in for the Pioneers. I think you expect a little bit of what we're seeing from Wheaton having not played since before Christmas, whereas the Pioneers a little bit shorter layoff. Francis open for three from the wing, no good. And a strong rebound by Charlie Soule. In transition, this is Heesh to the baseline. Drops it off and an easy lay-in for Charlie Soule again. I think you're right, Rusty. The layoff is, is difficult. Um, and they've just, they, they've had some, uh, they haven't helped in the last two possessions on defense. Four point lead for the Pioneers as Quam nearly turns it over and does. Carroll out in transition with Heesh. Heesh all the way to the bucket and an offensive foul. Great job by Aston Francis to stand tall right before he backed himself into the circle and take that charge. You know, Aston's such a savvy basketball player. Yes, he's the best player in the conference offensively, but def defensively as well, he knows what he's doing. He gets a lot of steals, and that time, that's a huge momentum play. Rather than have Carroll up six, now Wheaton gets a possession. Uh, big play from Aston on the defensive side. As Quam brings it up against Nick Penny all the way to the free throw line, kick out to Spencer Peterson, holding in the right corner. Quam against Penny again, keeps him on that side of the floor, gets into the lane, Spencer Peterson, open three from the right wing, bang! 
And that's big if you can get Peterson, who is very capable of shooting all the way out to the line. If he can get that three ball going, he becomes a tough match ma tough matchup. He, he is. He's, he's so big, so strong. He can score inside and out. That's a great sign. Spinning into the lane, losing the ball, and Spencer Peterson with a takeaway. Francis in transition. Kick out to Samuelson. Thought about the three. Crossed over and lost the ball. Three on one for the Pioneers against Jay Spencer. And the ball almost went in. But Anthony Marlowe will go to the line. And Jay Spencer is slow to get up for the Thunder. Marlowe went right in and got under his chin. Yeah. That's, that's really tough. Jay was going back in the break. And Marlowe just kind of dipped his shoulder. dipped you know Got him with that shoulder going into the lane. And it's tough for Jay. He's trying to get out of the way. Um, looks like he's up and he's he's staying in the game. It's just one of those where it's easy to bite your tongue on a play like that. Oh. And yeah, there's not much you can do as a defender there. Nice job by Marlota to, to create contact, and Jay's trying to use his long arms to stay out of the way, but still affect the shot. Eichelberger into the game for Jay, and Carroll will bring back Tanner Zeski and Ryan Clary. And I don't know if Wheaton's really, again figured out what they want to do against this triangle in two. I don't know if Carroll's used this at all this year. Um, so we has got to figure out how, how do we want to screen this? There's some different things you can do. I mean, use those guys as screeners who are being guarded. Use Aston and Ricky as screeners. Um, set double screens for those players. And again, find that third score and, you can, and you'll do just fine. A little bit of full court pressure here from the Pioneers. Quam drives on Penny, kick out to Peterson who traveled. Got the feet shuffling as he caught the ball. And the fourth turnover, fifth turnover of the night for the Thunder. Sixth, and, excuse me. And that's the sloppiness, Russell, you talked about. Whedon just had a long layoff. You hope that by the second half, they'll be back, they'll be good. You, you need to start stringing stops and then get that transition game going and get easy buckets. Easy to do when you're coming off a layoff of about 10 days between your last game. Three-point lead for the Pioneers as they come into this possession. This is Heesh around the high screen, gets it to Zeski. Looking to post Ingerbretson, cut off by Peterson. Swung back around, great ball movement here from the Pioneers, swinging left to right. Drop down to Ingerbretson, looking to kick, and now will work against Peterson. Eight on the shot clock. Spencer Peterson with great defense. It missed the rim. Shot clock did not reset. Penny for three from the wing. No good, and a rebound by Kobe Eichelberger. Great defense by Spencer there, uh, and now big possession for Whedon. Trailing by three. What you're seeing from Peterson is he gets his basketball conditioning in. That big body's tough. Yeah. He'll give up some inches, but he is tough to work against. Francis going to be guarded by Zeski, driving with the left hand. Trying to get to the basket, can't get there, and Eichelberger will tip it in. Great job by Kobe being active. Whedon has to find a way to get him involved. Francis remaining patient offensively, even though he's missed his first five shots. And an offensive foul against Ingebretson. That's his second. So both bigs for Carroll now in foul trouble with two. Yeah, Carroll loves to set a lot of ball screens. It looks like we've got a Wheaton timeout. Yeah, Mike Shower is going to call a 30-second timeout, kind of diagnose where his team is at here. The nice thing you see, Wheaton's come out flat and a little sloppy, but this game hasn't got away from him. You saw in that Alma game a little bit, when Alma came out locked in and Wheaton got sloppy, the game pulled away from him a little bit. So it's nice to see Wheaton be able to keep a defensive identity despite their struggles on the offensive end. Yeah, I agree, Rusty. I think Wheaton's really in the game. I mean, Carroll's one for six from three. If they were, again, like all my shot lights out, if Carroll made a couple more threes, we'd be in a little more difficult situation. But I think as Wheaton, again, as they get used to this triangle in two, the different defenses Carroll's throwing at them, I think they'll settle in and be just fine. And they've got to find a way to get Aston some good looks. I mean, what kind of good looks is he going to get out of the offense that he doesn't have to create on his own? That would be really important for him to get some clean looks out of the offense. Now they're really extending the top point here. Quam for three circle right, left it way short. Peterson will save it, but it's going to lead to a break for the Pioneers here. Great job by Quam to slow it down, and Eichelberger gets all the way back and breaks it up. Spencer Peterson now the other way. Leaves it for Francis, who lays it up and underneath. Great job by Spencer looking ahead to Aston, and a tough finish. Wheaton now leads. And a great job by Eichelberger getting back to break up the rush. Wheaton retakes the lead here, four straight points. Holding his penny all the way to the top now, Heesh. Handoff Ingebrets and stays in the game with two fouls. Heesh lost his balance on the jump stop and a loose rebound. And they've got a loose ball foul against Spencer Peterson. 
And that will be Spencer's second. Excuse me, his first. We'll see Cade Ailey off for the first time tonight. And this is a good opportunity for Cade. I mean, I think he's looked good in the minutes he's gotten. The freshman, great athlete, incredible leaper. Um, and now he can, he's not matched up against a huge guy, a solid player in Ingebrigtsen. Let's see what he can do. One thing Alioth gives you is some strength there in the middle too, also just a full body. Top for Howitt, driving to the left elbow, gets Eichelberger in the air, can't hit the jumper, and Aston Francis, a strong rebound flying in there. With Ingebrigtsen trailing, Wheaton attacking the basket. Here we go. for Alioth, who will shot fake, lays it up and in, and Ingebrigtsen is gonna pick up his third. Great patience from the freshman, Cade Alioth. And, that, and the gamble by the Pioneers backfires as Ingebretson picks up. Excuse me, that's only his second. Thought that was an early one from him, and it was not. So he now has two, along with Kale Maupin. Again, you see Luke pushing the ball. Against this triangle and two, this zone defense, if Wheaton pushes before they can get it set up, you're going to get good looks. And then Cade Alioth running the floor. And the freshman will complete the old-fashioned three-point play. Had a strong defensive effort in that Whitworth game. Four rebounds against. He's patient on the offensive end. When we've seen him shoot the ball, he's been effective. He's shooting 70% on the year. To the basket and a countering on the other end are the Pioneers. And Wheaton's going to return the favor here as it's Alioth who fouls the shooter. And Tanner Zeski will now go to the line for a three-point play. Again, when Jay Spencer's been out of the game, just there's been more opportunities for Carroll at the basket late on the rotation and just these drives are a little too easy for Carroll right now. Freshman mistake, he got caught on the high side of Marlowe there and could not recover in time. Three point play is good for the Pioneers. You'd also hope too, Rusty, that the initial defender wouldn't get beat that badly so we'd need the help that quickly. One point lead for the Thunder. Just under eight minutes left here in the first half. Alongside Tim Martin, I'm Rusty Lindsay. Thanks for tuning in here tonight on WTSN. Left wing Samuelson for the Thunder. Ricky's got four already. As Eichelberger's gonna drive to the hole through contact and the rebound comes off to Sol. And the Pioneers will now drive to take the lead. Into the corner, three ball for Zeski. Rattles out and Eichelberg with a very strong rebound through the contact of Sol. And Eichelberger will go the other way to shoot free throws now. Kobe, again, he's, he's been great on defense. He saved a possession in the transition, and now he's got a chance for some free throws. He looks good tonight. That third score, so you've got Aston Francis, the best player in the conference. You've got Ricky Samuelson, one of the top guys who's been amazing this year. Who's going to be that third scorer for Whedon? It could easily be Kobe, Kobe Eichelberger. And now Charlie Soule has two fouls as the Pioneers consolidating their fouls and getting themselves in some trouble here. Soule leads all scores with six points. Eichelberger to the line for the first time tonight. He has four, and Whedon's struggling at the stripe so far. Now just one of four. They've been very good at the free throw line the last few games after struggling early in the year, but it seems to be rearing its ugly head again tonight. Howitt looking to post against the freshman. They will swing it to the top and now drop it into the post and an easy lay-in for Anthony Marlowe. Again, Wheaton getting beat off the dribble. Luke kind of went for a shot fake there. Carroll gets in the paint and cashes it in. Francis comes off the high screen, guarded by Zeski, out on the right wing. Spins at the free throw line, gets himself open for the jumper, rattles it off, Alioth with the tip, and it will be knocked out of bounds and will stay with the Thunder. So Gunter and Spencer back for Wheaton. We have 6.47 to go here in the first half. It would really be nice for Wheaton to end this half on a little bit of a run and get some cushion going into halftime. And look to, you really need Jay Spencer to take advantage here with both Maupin and Inger Bretson. They're two main guys in the middle in foul trouble. Francis comes off the screen, wide open three from the corner, got it. And we'll see if that starts a streak for Francis. Who it just it takes him to see one go in and you could see a run. That's just a play we know he's runs, that little double screen, and he got it. And Luke Peters is going to be called for the foul, cutting off the drive of Joel Heesh. Like we mentioned, Heesh, one of four guys averaging nine or more points on the year. Zeski at 9.5, Heesh at 9.9, .9, Ray Pierce at 9.8, and Ingebretson at 9.1. Next foul will put the Pioneers at the line. Driving again, trying to get to the left hand, too strong. It's tipped loose, and Peters will save it to Jay Spencer. So Wheaton trying to add to a two-point lead. Francis, long three, and he's yes. fouled and he hit it! 
<laughs> we saw a few of these, the real deep balls last year from Aston. We haven't seen one yet this year, but he gets that one and the follow through foul. So the chance for the four point play here from Aston Francis. Rusty, you called that that one three goes in and he's so dangerous, such an amazing shooter. We haven't seen one like Aston since Kent Raymond, and even Kent wouldn't have shot, shot one that deep. And now it's a personal 6-0 run for Aston, looking to make it 7-0. Another pair of subs for the Pioneers. Like we talked about, very very deep team for the Pioneers. They'll run that rotation 10 deep sometimes. As a four-point play for Aston Francis, who just like that has a game-high nine points, and Wheaton quickly now with a six-point streak. 28-22 the lead, counting down towards six minutes left here in the first half. High screen and roll working Heesh into the lane. Kick out to Nick Penny. Penny swung near side. Cut off by Francis from the corner. Now they try to kick it out to the corner and there's nothing there. Nachos go flying as that pass goes swung into the stands. But it is the fifth turnover of the night for the Pioneers and that'll bring Justin Gruber into the game for the first time tonight. Replacing Ryan Clary who threw that ball away. So Whedon's going to run a set play here. I'm guessing it's one uh, for Aston to get him a look. Let's see if they can get a good look off this. Look to start to see Carroll maybe run an extra body off the top of these screens, which might open up a secondary look for the Thunder. Here comes Francis off the double screen. Thought about the three, gets into the corner, and well defended by Penny, and he skips to Samuelson on the left wing. 15 on the shot clock. Curl off the screen from Francis. Crossover for Ricky. Well defended by Gruber as Spencer falls down. And now a steal by Charlie Soule. With Samuelson back, he'll just let him lay it up and in. Sloppy possession there from the Thunder, and the Pioneers close the gap to four. Francis all the way out where he just hit one. Crossover and drive on Penny. Lays it up with the right hand. Can't get it to go. Rebound knocked loose, and it's Marlowe with the ball. Quickly, the Pioneers with numbers. Work down, and now the kick off to the far side for Heesh. Heesh against Peters. Dances with him at the line and kicks to the corner for Marlowe. Down, excuse me, Sol, Marlowe, Sol on the give and go. And the Pioneers have closed it to two. And you said, the Carroll's a deep team. A lot of guys who can hurt you. They work together, unselfish on offense. That was just a simple give and go. Uh, and Carroll's cut this lead down to two points. Francis loses Penny on the crossover. Open <laughs> three, got it. Bodies go flying on the rebound. But if you're going to guard him all the way out, that's the problem is he's so clean with the dribble, you've got to really trust the footing to come that far out. And just a step back for him from so deep, Aston is heating up like you predicted, Russ. He has 12 now after missing his first five shots. He's four for his last six. Five-point lead again for the Thunder, 10 on the shot clock as he drives, and then will be knocked out of bounds and stay with the Pioneers. You see, here comes Tyrell Derrick for the first time tonight, along with Eichelberger and Quam. Excited to see Tyrell. I mean, he played great out west. He's a guy, I feel like he can be a one more, one, like one more shooter that can give us one more weapon out there. Such a good athlete, good ball handler. So I, I really hope he can take advantage of these minutes. Tyrell played 18 minutes, and that went over George Fox because of the foul trouble. And he gets a foul on the inbounds play. Yeah, it was a little screen the screener action, and uh, Tyrell just kind of got caught up in it, and now it's an uh, important free throw. It's one one for Carroll. For Tanner Zeski, who makes the first. Carroll 6 of 6 at the free throw line, despite shooting just 65% on the year. Wheaton just 2 of 5 at the charity stripe. Right, Carroll really struggling from 3 1 for 7, but they've balanced that out with free throws. They got another one here. And a three-point lead as Zeski makes both. He has six to make it seven. This time it's Joel Heath trying to guard Francis. Drives, wide open three for Eichelberger. That'll go. And that's again, big. you see the drive collapsing the defense. And if they can get that and the threes go, that's Wheaton's prime offense. And that was great out west. Uh, Aston really becoming a distributor. And if Kobe Eichelberger can make that three, he's so hard to guard. Turnaround jump hook there for Anthony Marlowe, who's had a very nice night. Averaging three points a game, but now he has six for the Pioneers. Francis stops at the three-point line. Three-pointer is off. Skying for the oh. rebound, Eichelberger. 
He seemed to hang in the air for a couple seconds there and just tips it in. Watch it on the replay. Eichelberger coming out of the corner, just hanging there for the delightful putback. Man, he is just coming into his own. How did he get up that high? And then they have the presence of mind. He's getting hit to make the layup. He gives Wheaton a six-point lead. A lot of positive developments for Kobe Eichelberger. Eichelberg now with nine, and he'll look to enter double digits now with the three-point play. Here comes Alec Hamilton. He'll be the 11th pioneer we've seen tonight. Foul win against Charlie Soule. That's his third. So their 10 fouls really consolidated. Soul now with three. Ingebretson Maupin with two. And then Howitt, Zasky, and Heesh, each with one apiece. As Zasky, or excuse me, that's Heesh, gets all the way to the bucket for an easy lane against Peters. Yeah, too easy there. Too easy there. Where's the help in the lane, and, and why are we getting beat that easily? Samuelson will leave it for Peterson, and now hand off to Francis. He will dance against Zesky to the free throw line. Drop off for Peters. Man down for the Pioneers as Eichelberger just hit from there. Finds Samuelson right wing for three. That's good for Ricky Samuelson. So Kobe makes a three. They have to come on him now. He drives, kicks to Ricky. Great offense from Wheaton. And the three-point line has Wheaton now with an eight-point lead. Wheaton shooting 53.8%. That's 7 of 13 from beyond the arc. Into the corner for Heesh. Skip pass in front of the Thunder bench. That's Zesky. Drives on, on Samuelson. Cut off by Peterson. Back to Heesh for three. That's good for the Pioneers. And that timeout quickly taken by Carroll. As this is kind of the Mike Shower strategy of timeout. Get your good mojo in the huddle. That's a big three for the Pioneers. Bring it back to five instead of missing. And Wheaton can push the double digits there. It's huge. They've, they've had some good looks they've just missed. On the year, they're not a strong three-point shooting team at 33%. They've been much weaker. Their opponents have shot you know, almost 39%, but they needed that one. We would have a chance to get it to a double-digit lead. It's still at five. Let's see what uh, Coach Shower draws up here in the timeout to see if they can get another good look for go to maybe Kobe Eichelberger. You become hard to guard. Ricky is shooting the ball so well. Aston Francis is the best player in the conference. Now Kobe's getting going. That, you can see the potential of this team. We talked a little bit about the, the layoff for both teams. Both teams really coming out of the New Year's break a little a little weak. At the halfway point of the half, it was 17-14. to 14. All of a sudden, the offense has really opened up in the last eight minutes of this game. Wheaton now up 40-35. to 35. Right, threes, I mean, threes will do that. They energize the team, uh, give you some confidence. And now let's see what Wheaton's going to do here on O. Leading by five, Peters, Francis, Eichelberger, Spencer, and Samuelson. For the Thunder. As Peters drives to the baseline, shot fake, and he traveled. Yeah, good look from Luke there, just dragged the pivot foot there, uh, maybe slipped a little bit on the floor. He got Marlowe up in the air and then got happy with the feet. Hamilton, Marlowe, Heesh, Zeski, and Penny for the Pioneers. Forced to go small for a lot of this half with foul trouble to Ingerbretson and Maupin in the middle. This is Heesh, who's had some success with the drive. He gets their baseline. And a kick ball against Peters. Shot clock should not have re shot clock reset because Peters was running the other way. So they'll have to get that figured out. He went five hole on Eichelberger with that ball. But As you saw Jay Spencer threw him again, Rusty. Altering that play really led to a turnover if not for the bad luck on the kick. And Jay's the one real rim protector Wheaton has. They'll put 20 on the shot clock. And the Pioneers will inbound basket right. It will be Heesh to trigger for Carroll. Wearing the road oranges tonight. Bounce in to Marlowe. Back to Heesh who lays it up and in. I think Coach Shower's upset because Heesh never established himself in bounds before he got that catch. I'd have to look at it again, but that's the call I think Coach wants. Eichelberger, right wing three ball. Got it! And again, when he's hitting, it's tough because when he's such a strong driver of the ball that you all of a sudden have to come out farther than you want to against Kobe. That's such an element for this offense if Kobe can do that consistently. And just like that, Eichelberger the leading scorer with 13 points. A minute and a half and under as we head towards the halftime break. Offense really opening up. Long three for Carroll. No good and a strong rebound from Eichelberger. Kobe's got six boards now. Peters will slow things up at the top of the key and go to Jay Spencer there. And I'll try to post Aston Francis. 
Back to the top, Peters driving, stopped, kick out Eichelberger, back into Peters. Peters against Heesh. Tries to come back underneath, nowhere to go, and a three second violation. Great defense by Joel Heesh. Yeah, Luke is so good down there in the block for a guard. I mean, his brother Tyler, of course, you know, a legend here at Wheaton, but he got a lot of his points down in the block. Luke is very good down there, just, you know, it was great D from Carroll. And Heesh will take a break, replaced by Justin Gruber for the final 56.5 seconds of this half. And a big possession for the Pioneers to try to close this gap down from six and not give Wheaton a chance to extend with the final possession of the half. High handoff look from the Pioneers. Spinning into the lane and laying it up and in for Marlowe. Yeah, some good offense from Carroll. We got the little spin around Jay Spencer and Wheaton leads by four. And Wheaton will not get the last possession. About an eight second differential shot clock to game clock. Spencer on the left wing and a foul off the ball. Foul number 22, Zesky. It goes against Zesky, and now Zesky has two. And Aston Francis will go to the free throw line for two. The foul trouble mounting for Carroll. Um, they're deep, so I think they can withstand it. But that is going to be a factor here in the second half. Francis makes the first. You're going to see Gruber replaced again by Heesh. You know, so much, like we look at Kobe Eichelberger's great first half, Rusty, and it is fantastic. But so much of that is also, you have to give Aston Francis some credit because defenses are so concerned about him, so concerned about Ricky, that it's going to open up space, it's going to open up shots. So, even when Aston is not scoring, he's still opening things up, and of course he ha he's had a nice first half. But Whedon, there's, you know, they're a young team. They're, they're like we said, they're eight and three, two and one in the league. They're coming together. You can see the potential for this team. Gunter back into the game, replacing Jay Spencer for the final possession here. I think that's more to make sure Jay doesn't get another foul. And Carroll going to take their time now, 10 on the game clock as they attack. This is Heesh just getting all the way to the bucket again. Quickly Francis the other way, pulls up from three quarters court. I think he had another couple of dribbles there. But the Pioneers close that half well, 45 to 41. And they do a nice job of not allowing Wheaton to get that final kick to really get separation here at the halftime break. Yeah, I think that that'd be a big problem for Carroll if they've got to come back from a double-digit deficit. But you see them really attacking the basket. The Wheaton defenders are really uptight on the Carroll perimeter players, and they've just been getting beat off the dribble. And the screen roll has also hurt Wheaton. Heesh with 13 to close the half, Soul with 10 for Wheaton, 14 from Francis, 13 from Eichelberger. The number that matters, 45 to 41, the lead for the Thunder here at recess. We'll step aside at the halftime break. We'll, we'll come back on the backside, get you a look at the first half stats, and look ahead to the second half here. You're watching Wheaton Thunder basketball on the Wheaton Thunder Sports Network. sovereign God, eternally existing in three persons, the everlasting Father, His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the Holy Spirit, the giver of life. And we believe that God created the heavens and the earth out of nothing by His spoken word and for His own glory. We believe that God has revealed Himself and His truth in the created order, in the scriptures, and supremely in Jesus Christ. 
We believe that the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments are verbally inspired by God and inerrant in the original writing so that they are fully trustworthy and of supreme and final authority in all they say. We believe that Jesus Christ was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, was true God and true man, existing in one person and without sin. We believe in the resurrection of the crucified body of our Lord, His ascension into heaven, and His present life there for us as Lord, High Priest, and Advocate. We believe that God directly created Adam and Eve, the historical parents of the entire human race. And they were created in His own image, distinct from all other living creatures, and in a state of original righteousness. We believe that our first parents sinned by rebelling against God's revealed will, and thereby incurred physical and spiritual death. And as a result, all human beings are born with a sinful nature that leads them to sin in word, thought, and deed. We believe in the existence of Satan, sin, and evil powers, and that these have been defeated by God in the cross of Christ. We believe that the Lord Jesus Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, as a representative and substitutionary sacrifice, triumphing over all evil and that all who believe in him are justified by his shed blood and forgiven of all their sins. We believe that all who receive the Lord Jesus Christ by faith are born again of the Holy Spirit and thereby become children of God and are enabled to offer spiritual worship acceptable to God. We believe that the Holy Spirit indwells and gives life to believers, enables them to understand the scriptures, empowers them for godly living, and equips them for service and witness. We believe that the one holy universal church is the body of Christ and is composed of Christ's people. The task of Christ's people in this world is to be God's redeemed people, embodying his love by worshiping God with confession, prayer, and praise, by proclaiming the gospel of God's redemptive love through our Lord Jesus Christ to the ends of the earth by word and deed, by caring for all God's creation, by actively seeking the good of everyone, especially the poor and the needy. We believe in the blessed hope that Jesus Christ will soon return to this earth personally, visibly, and unexpectedly in power and great glory to gather his elect, to raise the dead, to judge the nations, and to bring his kingdom to fulfillment. We believe in the bodily resurrection of the just and the unjust, the everlasting punishment of the lost, and the everlasting blessedness of the saved. The sun was shining as well as it could on the shadowy river, a good part of the shine being caught in the trees. Since about this time last year, uh, painting the Fox River, starting up in West Dundee in the north, we're going to cover all the way down to Ottawa. That it happens at least with one painting I make out of these 60 that, you know, when you look at it, it just leads you. It's heuristic. You know, it, it wants you to go. It wants you to, to, to uh, you know, to encounter. I mean, I sometimes think of it as kind of homesickness. You know, where you feel like your identity is out there, somewhere else. You're here, but you, you have this pull, you know, to be somewhere, and it's an ache. And 
fact, in Gilead, you know, John Ames at some point talks about this old, this town, uh, Gilead, and he says, you know, this town has been wearied a little and then wearied a little more, and yet he says hope is still there. And, I mean, that is the thing, hope isn't the accomplishment. This whole idea of, you know, when is hope important? It's hope that it's important when it's dark, you know, when you can't see. That's when it manifests itself as, as a possibility. So, these paintings aren't about a sort of glorious resolution. I hope they are something that makes one feel a glimmer of hope for possibilities. Yoder. I grew up here in Wheaton and I transferred to Wheaton College because I wanted to be in a place that would shape me as a learner and as a Christ follower. For me, one of the best parts of Wheaton was my time spent at Honey Rock, Wheaton's campus in the Northwoods of Wisconsin where students can take classes, serve as camp counselors, and be developed as leaders. Honey Rock was a great place for me to grow in my faith, live out my sense for adventure, and form lifelong friendships. Whether it's Honey Rock or one of the many other ways to connect on campus, I'm excited to help you get a vision for life here at Wheaton. Hi, I'm Nate Brown. College will be one of the most transformational experiences in your life. My education in the context of a Christian community helps shape the way I live and engage the world around me. I love that Wheaton relates Christian liberal arts to the needs of contemporary society. The classes are designed to combine faith and learning, giving you a biblical perspective that's accessible and applicable. Wheaton students are challenged to answer questions like, what does it mean to live as a Christian doctor, engineer, or business professional. Being in an environment with other students and faculty who are passionate about their faith and serious about their education will help you to know who you are in Christ and prepare you to go wherever he leads you. I look forward to helping you find your way to Wheaton. Talk to you soon. Like when I close my eyes and don't even care if anyone sees me dancing Like I can't fly and I don't even think of touching the ground Like a heartbeat skip, like an open page, like a one-way trip on an aeroplane It's the way that I feel when I'm with you Brand new
back when I close my eyes Welcome back here to King Arena where Wheaton leads Carroll 45 to 41 in the first game back of 2018 for both teams. I'm Rusty Lindsay alongside Tim Martin and it's a, a big one for the Thunder when you look at this stretch that they have this week a chance to put themselves at the top of the CCIW and what could be just a knockdown drag out year for the conference when you really look at it Augustine is exceptional we know that but Illinois Wesleyan has proven stronger than they thought. North Central seems to be waking up and finding their stride a little bit here. This is a CCW that's very, very good this year. It is, Rusty, and you look at the conference as a whole. Right now, Augustana has its winningest coach of all time. Carthage has its winningest coach of all time. North Central has its winningest coach of all time. This is a very difficult time to be in the conference. When those three gentlemen retire, those programs will take a step back. Um, but right now, they are all very good. Um, Carthage has improved. So I think, you know, the top five teams, I do think, North Central, Augustana, Illinois Wesleyan, Carthage, Wheaton. But Elmhurst is much improved, and they're getting better, and all the teams are dangerous. North Park is playing better. That's not going to be an easy game Saturday. So Wheaton has to take care of a game like this at home. Even Milliken's going to find its identity as all those new bodies start to find chemistry. They're trailing North Park by, uh, by nine at half. The surprising score, Wesleyan 39-25 to 25 over Augustana at half down at the Shirk Center. Carthage trailing North Central 46 to 36 early in the second half and Elmhurst t just drubbing Edgewood 53 to 27 over there at RA Fagano Hall in the non-conference matchup. Wheaton's women's team was supposed to be on the road against Carthage tonight due to a partial power outage at the Tarble Center. That game's going to be pushed to tomorrow night at 5 o'clock. So if you've been kind of looking for updates from that, wondering why the live stats of that game isn't working due to the power outage, that game will be played tomorrow at 5 as we get back underway here from King Arena. Wheaton with a four-point lead and the Pioneers with the first possession of the half trailing by four. Ingebretson and Maupin with two fouls. And Soul with three. That's the big ones for the Pioneers to watch as they really consolidated their fouls very much. Wheaton with, with two. Wheaton's had seven players with one foul, so Wheaton really in no trouble in the foul category. The biggest problem for the Thunder was Carroll scoring in the paint 28 to 16 edge over the Thunder as Francis gets called for the travel before the shot goes up. Nice defense there by Maupin on the floor to start the half with the starters Howitt, Seski, Heesh and Ingebretson. And you wonder, Rusty, how long Wheaton keeps Kobe Eichelberger on the bench. Such a great first half. Uh, right now they're starting Gunter here in the second half. They go with their starting five, Gunter, Francis, Peter, Samuelson, and Spencer. There's a free throw line jumper, no good for Zeski. And Jay Spencer cleaning the board, Jay now with five. Coming off a 16 rebound performance. As Peters holding the dribble, finds Francis, step back three from the right wing, got it! He missed his first five shots, but he hit the one from the corner, and all of a sudden, Aston Francis feeling it with 17. And that's not an easy look, kind of takes a handoff from Luke, fading away right into the Wheaton bench and knocks it down. Driving is Heesh, Heesh crosses over, Francis gets his hand in there, draws the jump ball on the turnover. Luke Peters struggled against the drive of Joel Heesh in the first half. He did a very nice job getting to the rim. He finished with 13 points to lead the Pioneers. But Peters gets the first stop there, and the Pioneers will go to the bench, which was so good for them in the first half, scoring 18 points. Ingebretson replaced by Anthony Marlowe. Yeah, Marlowe, 3-for-3 three three from the field, 2-for-2 two two from the free throw line. 8 points, 2 assists, no turnovers, 1 steal. Had a very good first half. And averaging just 3 points a game coming in. To win on the road, you usually need an unusual suspect to step up, and he's been the guy for them. As Peters hounded all the way out by Kale Maupin. Oh, 
Holding and bounces to Samuelson. Carroll really extending the ball pressure here to start the half. Eight on the shot clock. Francis will dance with Sanderzeski. Opens himself up for three. No good. And a rebound by Howitt. Carroll with some very strong ball pressure here to start the second half. Marlowe trying to post high, and now he will set up the high pick and roll. They swing it to Heesh on the left side. Gunther off the switch. Zeski step back three to the right corner. That's good. Carroll just two of nine from the first half, but they hit their first three of the second half and cut it back to four. And Zeski is their most dangerous three-point shooter. He had eight threes in a game over holiday break against Pacific Lutheran. They run a double at Luke Peters, and Maupin had him well contained but he's gonna pick up his third foul because he walked into the body. So in will come Nick Penny. And Penny will replace Howitt. They'll keep mopping on the floor with three. Lob in, taken away by Marlowe. Marlowe against Gunter. Lays it up and in, and Gunter probably got away with one there. Wheaton really sloppy on offense. You see Kobe Eichelberger coming to the table to check in. They need that third score, but Wheaton has gotten really no good looks. Aston made a tough three, but other than that, the really bad offensive possessions. And Carroll back within two. They've, they've seemed to have set the energy bar tonight. Gunter back to Spencer, open for three from the left wing. That was tipped. Rebounded by Francis and laid back up and in. And a quick timeout by Mike Schauer, who probably wants to recalibrate his team a little bit. They've come out flat energy-wise. Carroll, as they did in the opening minutes, the more aggressive team right now. I've always been impressed. Last year, Carroll joins the conference. They always have great energy. You know, they seemingly have 30 players on the bench over there. The bench extends longer than I've ever seen here at King. But they bring the energy. And I think for Wheaton, they tried to run a couple of sets to start the second half. And they just, for whatever reason, they weren't able to execute. Had a lot of Luke just hand, holding the ball out in the perimeter. Aston bails him out one time with the tough three. And we look at Aston sometimes and people say, well, he's shooting some difficult shots. Well, sometimes, you know, when the offense isn't producing, he's got, he has to force those shots late. And the fact that he makes so many, he's such a remarkable shooter, really saves this team. Now with Kobe Eichelberger in the game, hopefully the offense can get going and they can get set on defense. And you saw Aston there with the offensive rebound and putback. I mean, he, so he's made a three on a tough shot. He's also got an offensive rebound and a layup, a really athletic play. So he's, uh, scorers find a way to, to score, and Aston's doing that here in the second half. We mentioned he missed his first five. He's six of ten since, including four of eight from the three-point line. And we've seen some players go down. You see these, the players kind of stepping off what might be some, some slickness underneath that basket. We've seen a couple players go down there throughout the night. Something to keep an eye on as we go along here in the second half. Both teams shooting over 50% from the field as we restart. Carroll right at 50, Wheaton at 51.4, lob down, and Charlie Soule, who just checked into the game, draws the foul against Jay Spencer and will go to the free throw line. Soule had an active half, scoring 10 points for the Pioneers, and he came in averaging 5.5, so it's been the bench that has really provided the energy for the Pioneers tonight. Yeah, and Soule's done that on four shots, so efficient, has not missed a shot or a free throw tonight. I tried to jinx him there, but I couldn't. <laughs> and you saw what Carroll ran there was the old Illinois Wesleyan overload play where they looked for the high-low action, and that it was really it was wide open. Soule now with 11, will try to make it 12 with this free throw, and cannot. I got him. So the lead stays at three for the Thunder. Eichelberger checked in at the break, replacing Gunter. Peters hands off Francis. Deep three, nothing but net. That's just a special play from a special player. Again, on the handoff from Luke, if teams overplay that, Aston will back cut. It'll open up driving lanes for Luke. Really hard to guard. Francis with 22. He strives, kicked to Zeski in the corner for three. He already hit one there, and he hits another, and now Carroll wants a timeout. Zeski is the one guy you can't leave on Carroll. He is by far and away their best three-point shooter uh, in terms of volume, and his percentages are good. And again, against Pacific Lutheran, he had eight threes. I think that set or tied a Carroll record for three-pointers in a game. And that's the one guy you cannot help off him. You have to stay home on Zeski. 
Yeah, he's got about 30% of their three-point attempts on the year. And again, you look at Wheaton, you can say the same thing about Aston Francis just because of the sheer volume he puts up. But for a team that only shoots 33% from the line, for a player to take that many, he has, uh, looks like, double, maybe, maybe even close to triple the attempts of the next closest player. And he's up near 40% uh, after his makes tonight, probably a little above that. So Wheaton has to stay home on him. Do not help off of him. The biggest thing that has set him up, though, is the success of Joel Heesh on the dribble drive. It's forcing a double. And there's a foul away from the ball by Ryan Clary. And I would just say, let's back off Heesh. Let's give him two steps. Let's make him make outside shots. Heesh only 3 of 14 beyond the arc coming in. Make him make those. Right. Peters at the top, guarded by Nick Penny, trying to get Francis off the screen. Look, they get it to Eichelberger at the free throw line. Drop down to to Jay Spencer. Make a move, Jay. Jay backs him all the way get in. Get right there. hand, we'll go. And another one. Jay, a very patient take here. Working against Anthony Marlowe. He has that ability, he has those skills. That was high-low action from Eichelberger to Jay. I mean, Jay, you saw it in the first possession of the game. Jay gets offense real, makes a really nice move inside. There he does the same thing. That's another missing link for this Wheaton offense. Can you get some post-production? And I think the guys to do it are Jay Spencer or Spencer Peterson. Jay now with seven points and five rebounds. Cleary drops low and an easy reverse lay-in for Charlie Soule. Just too many easy layups for Carroll in this game. Right, so we're, we're hugging Charlie Soule on the perimeter. He makes the back cut. He's a guy, he hasn't even shot a three tonight. Let's let's get off him. Coaches will say it all the time. KYP, know your personnel. And that's what Wheaton's struggling to do here tonight. Spencer attacking again, and Penny's gonna time. Do we have a time? Nope, we've got a foul. A reach in foul against Nick Penny as Spencer tried to pull away. You know, Wheaton up four. 15.25 to go. Carroll's in some foul trouble, even some of their key guys, so Wheaton has an advantage, but this is a time you really would like to extend this out to about 10. Peters to Francis, right wing. Francis will pull up for three. Got it! That's such a difficult shot, and he makes it look so easy. In the eye of the defender, and Wheaton up a touchdown, 59-52. Crossover to the far side. Soul will swing it over to Zeski. Nice handoff action as Marlowe drives. Kick out Penny, who got away with the Texas two-step there and is called for the travel. And let's give credit to Kobe Eichelberger. Check the replay here. Kobe came over and helped, got his position, forced the extra pass, and then, then we got the turnover from Carroll. Pair of subs for the Pioneers. Spencer will be replaced by Spencer Peterson. And Zach Quam into the game. Yeah, Quam giving Samuelson a break. Penny guarding Peters here. Francis coming off the double screen action. Ball was knocked away to disrupt that look. And now it's Joel Heesh's turn to try to check Francis. Francis looking for the turnaround jumper. Knocked away. Eichelberger grabs it all the way out. Breakdown in the defense. And Eichelberger all the way in and left it short. Rebound is grabbed by Maupin, who comes back in with his three fouls. Penny's thought about the three, keeps the foot down this time. Mid-range jumper is good. And you can live with that, make him shoot a long two, make him, you know, take it off the dribble. Wheaton plus five here, had a chance two possessions ago to build this lead to nine. On a very good look from Michael Berger. Peterson taking his time on the right wing, now gets Zach Quam on the top of the key. Quam holding, puts it down and bounces to Peterson all the way out. Baseline drive, spinning in an offensive foul. Spencer Peterson, that was a, a big call there because it would have been Maupin's fourth. And you see it on the replay, does a nice job sliding to the baseline to get in position there. Yeah, I like seeing Spencer being aggressive. Probably nowhere to go there on the baseline, really a tough move. Wheaton up five. Again, looking for who else can bring him some offenses. Have Aston has gotten going, who else can give them some scoring? Francis with 25 to lead off scorers. High hedge there from Peterson, really disrupting that pick and roll. Heesh driving behind the back, into the lane, right hand up and good. Joel Heesh is getting whatever he wants tonight against Luke Peters, who is normally a very sound on-ball defender. Yeah, Luke's a great defender. There's no other options for Heesh. That's who you want. Maybe just give him a little more room and really try to force him left. 
Eichelberger thought about the three. He will drive. Spin into the lane. Back out into the corner for Quam. 12 on the shot clock. Bounce low. Peters will post against Penny. Gets it to the left hand and gets it to go. Luke Peters has a very strong left hand and he finishes there. He does. Uh, like his brother Tyler, I think he's almost, you know, they're both great down in the block. Great going left and that's a good matchup for Wheaton. Luke on the block. Pushes the lead back to five as we go inside 13 minutes to play. I'm Rusty Lindsay alongside Tim Martin. He's again down the lane. To try, thought about the kickoff too hard. Eichelberger outlets to Francis as Wheaton comes the other way without numbers. Francis tried to go behind the back and lost the dribble. Working against Luke Peters. Wild great job shot by up Luke. and no good by that's, Ryan Clary. That's great defense from Luke. And Clary really forced it there. Was it a good opportunity for the Pioneers to bring that back to a one possession game instead? Peters with a nice defensive stop. Back cut by Francis. Somehow gets there. All the way out to Luke Peters. Peters down the lane. Eichelberger. Back out Peterson for three from the right wing. No good. And a rebound for the Pioneers. Spencer was open early in calling for that ball. And the defense is closed by the time that shot went up. Samuelson and Jay Spencer ready to check back in for the Thunder. Next dead ball. It'll be Zesky returning for the Pioneers. Maupin swings it to Heesh. Back up for Cleary against Francis. Cut off, back out to Heesh. Heesh again to the free throw line. Peters cuts him off. Cleary bounced low, tipped away, and the Pioneers will inbound with four on the shot clock. And Trevor Gunter is gonna join this group checking in as well. He'll replace Peterson. Along with Peters and Eichelberger coming off for the Thunder, it'll be Clary coming out for the Pioneers. So Wheaton's really started to help off of 42 Maupin. It's been Spencer Peterson, now it's uh, Trevor Gunter. They've helped off Maupin to help inside on Heesha's drives. I hope Trevor Gunter continues that and makes Maupin beat them. Maupin's attempted just 23 shots coming into play tonight. Bounce low, blocked oh, by oh, Jay. Oh. And that'll be taken away by Francis, outletting the Samuelson. What a pass by Aston Francis and a foul on the shot attempt. What a pass. The length of the floor by Aston Francis in transition, hitting Samuelson in stride. And the foul will be the third against Tanner Zeski. You know, that pass would have made Tom Brady proud there. He just, he anticipated, threw it ahead. He's just got that ability. He's just such a, a basketball player to find his teammates, and he knew that Ricky was going to be there. And a big stop. It started with a Jay Spencer block, ignited the break. Now Wheaton gets two points. Again, Jay Spencer at the rim. Is really a rim protector. And now the president, Reagan Jones, getting in. Yeah, not exactly sure what the holdup here is. Here you see the block by Jay Spencer. Got lost in position and just does a nice job of closing out on the back side there. So a pair of subs for the Pioneers. We'll see Reagan Jones in the game for the first time tonight. And he will give Wheaton an athletic look here, almost as a stretch four. Yeah, I, li I like the idea. He gives us another shooter. He's a guy who has a lot of experience. Uh, missed free throw there from Ricky. Uh, let's give him a look and see if, if he can get a shot or two to go down. He could be a nice addition here. Samuelson, the leading free throw shooter for the Thunder, shooting just shy of 90%, and he splits the pair. Wheaton just 7 of 11 at the line tonight. So a six-point lead following the split pair by Samuelson. Ricky, a quiet night so far tonight, just seven points. Inger Bretson back in, he'll work against Jay Spencer. Baseline pass to Zeski against Samuelson. Back out to Inger Bretson at the three-point line, driving on Jay Spencer. Spins looking for an opening. Dish across the lane, the layup's no good by Charlie Soule, but he draws the foul on Reagan Jones. And I think that's gonna be a very sh short stint on the floor for Jones as Gunter comes right back to the table. Right, I'd love to see Reagan get one offensive possession here just to see, spread the floor, give yourself another shooter, but Carroll went right at him. Right in the post with uh, 33 there, Sol. And he misses the first free throw. Carroll was 8 of 9 from the line tonight, and sure enough, this will be Gunter right back in for Reagan Jones. Yeah, Reagan, I mean, he's got a lot of experience. I mean, he started, he started a number of games. He's had some great moments. He, he can really can shoot the ball. So I'm hoping we can get him in the rotation a little bit. He's the guy that came into the year a little bit banged up, and Gunter and Spencer and Jay Spencer took such big strides that really nowhere for him to break into the rotation. Right. As Sol misses both free throws, a regression of the norm perhaps coming at the free throw line for the Pioneers. Quam driving kick out Francis. Pulls up from the three-point line. Got it. He left Heesh behind. And Wheaton pushes the lead to nine. That's their largest of the night. And how do you guard that? I just don't know how you can guard that. He's got 28. 
Looking to bounce a little to Ingerbretts and taken away by Jay Spencer. Leaves it to Francis in transition. Aston to the corner for Samuelson for three. Got it! And a quick run for the Thunder and a timeout taken by the Pioneers. Biggest lead of the night for the Thunder. Back-to-back -back threes by Francis and Samuelson. And Aston wasn't even looking at Ricky there. He was looking left. He knew Ricky was on his right. Passed to him. Hit him right in his shooting pocket. Ricky knocks it down. The tough three from Aston. Followed by Ricky's three. This is why Wheaton is so dangerous. You know, in the preseason coaches poll, Wheaton was not picked to get into the tournament in the top four. And I thought that was probably a mistake because they did have the best player in the league in Aston Francis and a lot of good young up-and-coming players. And you see, you see just how good they can be on offense. When they are able to get stops, when they are able to get defensive rebounds, they can run. And in transition, Ricky, Aston, Kobe Eichelberger, these guys are just hard to guard. And that, that really two-headed monster that you mentioned with Francis and, and Samuelson, when they're both hitting, it's tough because they, they can be so lethal from deep that it, the spirit of a team can be broken by a barrage of three-pointers. And mm -hmm. when those kids can hit, both of them, that's, that, that can break the will of a defense sometimes. In Aston, it's not like he's getting uh, catch-and-shoot threes. He's creating his threes off the dribble. Um, there's nothing really that he's getting out of the offense to get threes. He's just creating them out of the offense himself. So that's why it becomes so difficult to guard. This is not like an easy adjustment teams can make to stop him because he can step back, but he also is driving. He can also find his teammates. Then you even saw him get an offensive rebound and put back. He's the complete package. Around the conference, Milliken trails North Park 55 to 45. That down at the Griswold Center, Illinois Wesleyan continues to take care of Augustine. A 15 point lead with inside a 10 left and an 11 point lead for North Central over Carthage with six minutes to play. Elmhurst leading by nearly 30 over Edgewood in a non-conference matchup. Maupin back into the game for the Pioneers. They're trying to post Ingerbretson. Great job here by Gunter. Heesh thought about the three. Bounces Ingerbretson at the free throw line. Drives on Gunter. Nowhere to go. Tough shot. Takes a second hop on the rim out of the hands of Jay Spencer and leads to an easy little putback for Heesh. Yeah, Jay just had some bad luck. That ball took that extra bounce. Now some full court pressure here. Looks like a zone from Carroll. A little bit of a 1-3-1 one, one yeah. look here from the Pioneers. Just trying to find some traps. Instead, it leads to an open three for <laughs> Samuelson. Counter punch for the Thunder, and they go up 13. That can be a tough spot to guard in the one through on that corner three, and really pretty easy for Wheaton. This one pass to Ricky knocked it down. This is a defense Wheaton has not seen much of, so this could be interesting to see how the Thunder adapt, because it's a look they could see down the stretch, trying to neutralize their shooters a little bit, and especially when Francis is out of the game, creates some extra ball pressure. Maupin finds the back cutting Heesh, a left handed layup. He's got 19. See, I'd like to see Jay Spencer more in the paint there. Maupin was handling the ball on the perimeter. I don't think you need to guard him out there, get in the paint and kind of help on those types of plays. And right back to the man to man. So that looked like a one and done look here from the Pioneers. Quam, high screen from Gunter. Gets to the free throw line. Kick out. Jay Spencer open three. Got it! And you talk about breaking wills with threes. Just watching the Carroll bench there, the head slunk after that one. Just all of them, like they know that Wheaton's hit their last five three-point attempts. Right, it's, it's, it's a lot of different guys where Wheaton can hurt you. He throws up a wild shot and finally getting the stop with Francis gets the rebound. Trying to add to a 14-point lead here. And he will work into Troy Howitt. Jay Spencer on the left wing against Maupin, one and done dribble, leaves it for Gunther on the baseline, back up Quam. They'll set up the high pick and roll look. As here comes Gunther with help defensively from Ingerbretson, picks up his dribble, finds Francis, fades around the screen, five on the shot clock, into the lane, and he is fouled trying to dish to Quam. That'll go against Nick Penny, and Wheaton's one foul away from the free throw line. Again, not a lot going there in that possession for Wheaton, but they're patient. Aston gets a drive, looking for like a drive kick opportunity. Kind of gets bailed out on that foul. Is now Eichelberger and Luke Peters in, Jay Spencer and Ricky Samuelson out. Uh, almost an entirely different look here from the Pioneers. They bring in four subs. Yeah, they're, they're smart to get Zaski back into the game, their best shooter. He's the only one that stays. Lobs into Peters at the elbow. Interesting look here from the Thunder. Almost running a, a high fade look there for Francis. Francis guarded by Zeski, steps back, dances to the right hand, spins at the free throw line, finds Gunter on the baseline, hits the dribble, up for the lane, and he's fouled by Anthony Marlowe. Yeah, what a read from Aston here. He's in trouble and finds Trevor. 
Trevor took a look there at Kobe Eichelberger, but balanced himself and went up. Great job by Gunter as well. You talk about it, you see it a lot in football. Wide receivers are taught to sit down in an opening against the zone defense. That time Gunter saw the defender go out. He cuts to the block, finds an open area to make himself presentable, and takes the pass for the, and gets the foul. And so Wheaton now 14-point lead, a chance to build on it here. You know, this is kind of what you expect from a team. If you want to compete for that top four in the conference, you're at home. Now you're up 15. This is kind of what you expect, and it's a great sign. Gunter hits both free throws. I'm not sure the other free throw went up on the board. There it goes. 76 to 60 lead for the Thunder, who have really pushed this lead in the last three and four minutes. As they're running that high wheel action, we ain't showing against Tiege. This is Soul. Bounce down to Marlowe against Gunter, and he gets it to go. Yeah, Marlowe's looked great tonight. Uh, just a strong move, kind of dipped his shoulder into Trevor and got a tough two points. He's been very good. As Peters hounded by Soul. Here comes Francis, takes the handoff. Nice defense by Zeski. Francis was trying to pull up into a three there at the wing. Kicks near side for Quam. Eight on the shot clock. Quam into the lane. Turnaround jump shot. No good. And the rebound back out to Cleary. Pioneer's going to need to start stringing scores and stops together. He swings to Cleary. Bounce to the baseline for Soul. Pick and roll with Marlowe. Bounce to Marlowe against Eichelberger. Colby holds his ground. Skip. Heesh. Zeski for three. Circle right. Got it. Again, the one guy you can't, you cannot help off of Zeski. And Wheaton did, and he made him pay. Timeout Pioneer is here. This will be a full timeout as they cut the lead back to 11 with 7.06. Look at, we talked about that run. It was just a three-point lead for the Thunder with 13.39 left in the game. From there, it was a 17-4 run over just over four minutes of action. So those threes just really added up quickly for the Thunder as they've stretched this into a comfortable lead. But you start to look at what we talked about that George Fox game. They had a comfortable lead. The ball pressure of the Bruins forced themselves back into the game. Some late threes gave them a lead with about four minutes left. But Wheaton then put that thing away quickly, especially with Eichelberger. So Wheaton's been tested in these scenarios now in the last couple games. They have. They're still a very young team. I mean, you look out there on the floor, I see one senior, Ricky Samuelson now, as they're going back, looks like they've gone back with their starters, except you've got Kobe in for Jay Spencer. So, and Wheaton does play at a fast pace, a lot of possessions, so it is going to be a streaky game. Teams can come back a little bit, but this is a great test for them. 7.06 to go, you're up 11. Can you get quality possessions? Can you use some clock? And then can you, you know, be smart on defense and really try to take away Carroll's best options? Zeski, the three-point shooter, and then he just drives. Try to take away those two things, make someone else beat you, and I think you're going to be in good shape. Carthage closing out North Central. They had it down to six, and then Sorensen with a layup for the Cardinals. He has 26 now. So we'll see how this game goes over the last three and a half minutes. Carthage trying to challenge the Cardinals, who are trying to get back to 500 in conference play. Here's the Pioneers forcing a turnover with full court pressure out of the timeout as Eichelberger tried to split the double team. Yeah, Wheaton's got to find Aston Francis there. Get the ball to Aston and good things will happen against full court pressure. Illinois Wesleyan has stretched their lead to 19 over Augustana at home with 6.30 to play down at the Shirk Center. If that score holds, as does this one, Wheaton's going to be tied for the conference lead at the end of the night. As another easy lay-in, that time for Anthony Marlowe. Lead down to, down to 9 here with a 7-0 run by the Pioneers. Peters into the corner, Samuelson wisely will slow this one down. Francis drives, cuts and cutting left hand, oh, oh, oh. and he has 30. I mean, he switches hands in the air, goes to his left, builds the wheat lead to 11. Really a special move there from Aston. And stops the 7-0 run by the Pioneers. Marlowe will work against Gunter, leaves for Cleary. Cleary pulls up with the right hand, no good. Rebound is loose in the lane, and Samuelson grabs it. And Luke Peters wisely calls for the ball to walk this into the front court. Time is the friend of the Thunder, leading by 11, counting down towards six minutes left in this one. A nice crowd on hand here at King Arena with campus being empty. Eichelberger driving and an offensive foul. 
He had a little out of control there. I don't know where he was going. Yeah, just really a tough with, with that contact to try to spin out of that. Marlow does a nice job taking that one. Mopping back into the game, as is Ingebretson. You really look at this next three minute stretch. This is going to be the key to the Pioneers. They're going to need to win this three minute stretch probably by four or more to feel like they have a shot down the stretch. You can't leave all the heavy lifting for the final couple minutes. Right, and Wheaton had a chance by the same token, Rusty, to put this game away. Uh, the turnover against the full court pressure, um, some sloppy defense has kept Carroll around. That was the third foul against Eichelberger, fourth against the Thunder, seven already against the Pioneers, so Wheaton shoot, shooting free throws the rest of the way. Inger Bretson against Jay Spencer. Tries to get to the right hand and he airballed it. And a foul as Francis goes corkscrewing out of bounds. I believe that might be four against Zeski. And for Aston, I think that's rebound number seven. You know, so he's gotten some really tough ones and you see Jay Spencer altering that shot. I mean, Ingebrigtsen, last year he was a really strong player inside. I think he's still a very good player, but he had a hard time there against Jay Spencer trying to make that move. So Aston will make his third trip to the line tonight. He's now 4-4 four four there. You know, you look at Aston, 31 points now on 19 shots. That's efficient. I mean, 7 of 12, 4 for 4 from the free throw line. Um, assist to turnovers. Not bad as much as he's handling the ball. Yeah, he was so good with the assist, going for 15 assists in those two wins in Oregon. Just two tonight. But he's made up for it. He didn't have the big scoring game on that West Coast trip. He has tonight now with 32. He's spinning to the middle, and he sinks the left-handed runner there. Joel Heesh. Now with 21 points, he's got 21. Zeski has 16. We mentioned Carroll, if they can get four guys to double figures, has a shot, they've got four. The problem is there's just five points from, from the rest of the team other than those four guys in double figures. And maybe we're, see, we're seeing Carroll again, they're pretty young. We're seeing them come up with their identity tonight. With uh, coming into the game, nobody on this team averaged double digits, but you're seeing he score. You're seeing Zesky score, so maybe they're figuring out those are their two guys, and then everybody else is going to play off them. This is Marlowe returning for Ingerbretson after he picked up his third. So Jay Spencer to the line for the one and one. We struggled early from the free throw line. I believe they were just one of their first four, but since then they've been exceptional. Eleven of their last twelve. And again, on the floor for Wheaton now, sophomore, junior, 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 and then Ricky Samuels from the one senior. So still not the most experienced group. 13-point lead for the Thunder, just about five minutes left. Heesh, one step ahead of the back-cutting Zeski, who stays on the floor with his four fouls. Carroll going to press again now. They, they trapped Wheaton and forced one turnover with this press. Hopefully Wheaton's ready now. The next time Wheaton got the ball to Aston, they got a good look on the other end. There's a guy on the ball, and they're probably going to use that guy to trap the first pass. Delayed double. Here it comes from Maupin. They break it to Samuelson at half court, and Ricky will slow things down here as we go inside of five minutes to play. Peter Samuelson, Spencer, Eichel, Berger, and Francis for Wheaton. Maupin, Marlowe, Soule, Penny, and Heesh for the Pioneers. Francis, circle left for three, off to the right side. It went off the hand of Sol and out of bounds. Wheaton catches a break and an extra possession. Yeah, so Wheaton, 82-69 is the lead, 4.37 to go. Let's, a, new, a new shot clock, 30 seconds. Let's use that 30 seconds. Let's limit the possessions here the rest of the way. And Peters will pull this one all the way out to near the timeline. They're doubling Francis off the screen. Look for that to open up something on the backside. 18 on the shot clock as Peters goes baseline and brings it back out. Now he'll try baseline again against Marlowe, up and under, laying off, and Marlowe the rebound. Marlowe now running the floor, dishes it off to Sol, who hits the layup and the foul. And they can bring this back to 10 here with 4.11 to play. Carroll hanging around, kind of a forced shot from Wheaton on one end, as so often happens after a missed layup. A missed shot inside, Carroll gets an, uh, a, a fast break opportunity and a chance for a three-point play. And just like that, 
It's a 10 point lead again for the Thunder. Francis will break the pressure into the free throw lane and back out to Luke Peters. Slow to get the pressure on Peters inside of four minutes to go. And now France is going to take the, what could be an ISO look here at the end of the shot clock. Inside of 10. He drives on Heesh all the way to the bucket. Gets the lane oh. to go. And the foul. I mean, he's hit so hard on that shot. He still has the control to put it in. He was going to take this shot on this possession. I mean, we've seen him from the three. We've seen him driving. We've seen him passing even on the offensive glass. He had a big steal. He's had some big defensive rebounds. He's had a complete game. 34 now for Francis pending the free throw. And he's now 6 of 6 at the free throw line tonight. Makes it a 13 point lead and a timeout taken here by the Thunder. It's a final over at the Hangar North Central 77, Carthage 67. So North Central will get to 2 and 2 in the CCIW and they bring the Redmen back to 2 and 2. Illinois Wesleyan just about three minutes away from closing out maybe the most impressive conference victory of the year so far. They have just dominated Augustana from the jump. They lead by almost 20 with three and a half minutes to go. So that's going to bring Wesleyan to three and one, drop Augie to three and one. And then Elmhurst leading by 30 over Edgewood in a non-conference matchup. North Park has led by at least nine for about the last 20 minutes of their game against Milliken down in Decatur. So the Vikings looking to get their first CCIW win before they come to King Arena on Saturday. This could be the Vikings coming in, riding a little bit of a high here coming into the King Arena. Yeah, they, you know, they, they got the bad news when Jordan Robinson decided not to play this year. The Conference Player of the Year last year, Colin Lake, has stepped up for North Park. They're dangerous, and they're going to be ready for Wheaton, that's for sure. Um, but I think, you know, at the end of the day, you see North Central beating Carthage. I think they're going to be near the top of the conference when this all shakes out. And Wesleyan's immensely talented. So if they had a, I, I'm assuming they had a really good shooting day against Augustana. And Augustana did lose Pearson Wofford. Maybe, well, I mean, it's certainly one of their top two or three players. So they're a little more beatable right now. So it, it's going to be a great run in the conference. 13-point lead as we get going again. Heesh into the lane, pulls up at the free throw line, kick out to Marlowe. Spencer sagging as Marlowe loses the dribble on the drive. Zeski around the high screen for three, gets it to go. Carroll again will not go quietly into that good night, and they bring it back to 10. <laughs> right, so Zeski got a ball screen there. You've got to hedge that harder or even double off that, but Wheaton went under the screen and got burned. Here comes the double. Francis beats it to Peters, and they will retreat into the front court. And attacking the basket is Eichelberger, who gets the bucket from Samuelson and a foul. I think when a team, I mean, Carroll's going full court, they're trapping full court. I, that's a smart move for Wheaton to try to just attack that and get two points. And more importantly, Zeski, who's their best three-point threat, is fouled out of the game now with 3.04 left. He finishes with 19 points. Four of eight from beyond the arc. Heesh with 21, Zeski with 19, 16 for Sol, 14 for Marlowe. But after that, pretty big drop off. Three for Howitt and two for Penny. That's it. So we talked about them needing some balance. They almost need a little bit more balance, at least evenly underneath those big four. As Heesh drives, looking to create no good, and Luke Peters with a rebound there, trying to rip it out of the grasp of Marlowe, and Marlowe will send Luke Peters to the line. Yeah, Heesh is a guy who's much better when he's going to his right. So Wheaton's done a little better job here of sagging off him a little bit so they have a little easier time containing the drive. Also forcing them left a little bit more. Uh, and then Luke, big box out there, got the rebound. And Luke Peters is one of the premier perimeter defenders in the conference. And he's, he's upped his game here in the second half. He's now just 10, I mean, he's 10 to 15 from the line, so he's at, or from the field. Had a very effective night getting to his 21 points. A little bit of delay as we check with the foul. It's Marlowe's third. Wheaton already in the double bonus, so Luke Peters will go to the line for two, where he has missed two already tonight. Now 0 of 3 at the stripe. He has three of Wheaton's five free throw misses. And he get four of six. Misses both again. 13-point lead at 88-75, 2.40 to go. Bounce down to Marlowe, go to work against Gunter. Kick out, three ball from Maupin, who knocks it home. And
and that's Maupin's just the second three-pointer of the year. He is one of five coming into play tonight. That time he leaves Maupin in the dust all the way to the basket and he's fouled. Carroll just hanging around, Rusty. I mean, Wheaton, like you said, Carroll will not go off into the good night. And so Aston's going to attack him here on this fast break. And when a team is going to press you full court, I think you do need to look to attack him. Maybe we could pull that one out and run some clock. But if you're not going to attack him, they're going to be emboldened to keep trapping you and, and being even more aggressive. Especially if nobody steps up to stop the ball like that. As Francis misses his first free throw, Jay Spencer into the game for Trevor Gunter. Gives Wheaton five guys that can handle the ball against this pressure for Carroll. Leads at 10 here with 2.27 to play. Francis splits a pair. He has 36. Perhaps most importantly, Wheaton has, has won the rebounding edge convincingly here in the second half. Step back three for Heesh. That's no good. Eichelberger and Samuelson fighting for the rebound and a foul by Marlowe of Eichelberger. So Kobe to the line now for two. Yeah, Kobe, kind of a, a more quiet second half here. He's got 16 for the game, 13 in the first half. But that was really key when he got going in that first half. It was a, a time where Wheaton trailed for a short amount of time, and he was able to give Bill, help Wheaton build a lead, and now two big free throws. We've talked about his balanced scoring for Carroll and for Wheaton needing that extra score. Obviously, Francis with the 36 is your headliner, but 16 now, 17 for Eichelberger, 13 for Samuelson, 12 for Spencer. So you've had those guys step up to, to put, pick up Wheaton underneath the headliner of Francis. And when you can get three, four guys into double figures for the Thunder underneath Francis, three additional guys, that's a really tough offense to stop because that's why you see they've got 91 here with two minutes left. Exactly right. Wheaton is deep with a lot of talented players and young players who are getting better. Howitt to the basket draws the foul against Jay Spencer. And he will go to the free throw line now with 2.03. And that's something where Jay was trying to stay straight up. He's probably got to get a little better at that. He just kind of jumped into the uh, offensive player there. But, again, Jay is the one guy who can alter shots at the rim, and it makes a big difference. You notice it when he's out of the game. The other teams get a lot more at the basket. And, and again, Jay's only a sophomore. He, he works so hard. He's such a great young man. He can make outside shots. We've seen him score a couple with a nice, a couple of nice post moves. Uh, the future is so bright for him here at Wheaton, and it's great to see him getting all this time to develop. Wesleyan finishing off a very convincing 19-point win over Illinois Wesleyan. Brady Rose with 26 in that game to lead the Titans. Put some big numbers in the scoring column tonight across the CCIW. Away from Francis, 26 for Rose, 28 for Sorensen, 18 already for Colin Lake for the Vikings. So there's, there's some points being put up across the conference. As Aston Francis loses that ball trying to split the double team, as Howitt brings it back into the front court, Howitt gets left open for three, dishes to Heesh, baseline drive, and Heesh, it's out of bounds. I think it's no deflection, they rule. Right. Wheaton basketball here, and I've got to say, Rusty, probably the best help defender for Wheaton tonight's been Kobe Eichelberger. He has been, his help has been early, his help has been solid outside of the lane, uh, and he is, he's been a key for the Wheaton defense. Another turnover by the Thunder as Samuelson throws that to the Wheaton bench for Coach Shower. Cleary back into the game here as they bring back maybe a more shooting friendly look. Marlowe for Maupin. Wheaton with 17 turnovers tonight. That's going to be something they're going to look to clean up before Saturday. He's going to work as Jay Spencer now. Driving basket, no good. Tipping is good by Marlowe. Nine point lead is the first time back within five, 10 points here in the last five minutes or so for the Pioneers. You're going to put some pressure on the Thunder to close this one out. Luke Peters, that's the guy they want to foul. That's a missed opportunity for the Pioneers as Francis brings it into the front court. Yeah, very surprising they didn't foul Luke there. And again, another opportunity, and they still don't. And now a timeout taken by Mike Shower. That's. We talked about KYP there. They've got to know Luke Peters is the guy to foul. Now that he's on the floor, Tyrell Derrick, I believe, is coming in to take his spot. You've got to foul Luke when he's got the ball if you're Carroll. Right. It looks like they were trying to play out that possession. They're down, they're down three possessions, thinking they could maybe have time to try to get one more stop, one more turnover. Uh, but I agree, probably a missed opportunity. Now some confusion on the timeout. 
They were, yeah, well, I think they were about to call a foul. Mike Shower called timeout before the double team could come. So they were trying to figure out what came first. If it was the foul in front of us or the timeout on the far side, they give the timeout to Wheaton, who will inbound right in front of us with 59.4 left and 14 on the shot clock. Tyrell Derrick and Zach Quam into the game, likely to replace Eichel Berger and Luke Peters. So there's an opportunity missed for Carroll, who loses about 20 seconds by not fouling there when Luke had the ball in the backcourt. And you don't send Peters in the line, who's 0 for 4 and around 40% on the year. Right, and I think a tough spot for Tyrell Derrick to come in. He's played about a minute tonight, and then you throw him in here in the l late in this game. Um, He's I'm not sure they really got those subs into the game, Rusty. Interesting. Yeah, they keep they keep the same five on the floor. Not sure if those subs were coming in for a defensive purpose or not, but they were at the table and then checked back. Hmm. So Wheaton stays with Peters, Spent Jay Spencer, Samuelson, Francis, and Eichelberger. Penny, Howitt, give him something, give him something orange, a little bit. Heesh, Marlowe, and Cleary for the Pioneers. They inbound into the backcourt for Francis. Double team comes just shy of half court. Loses the ball. Samuelson picks it up, brings it into the front court, picks up his dribble. Five on the shot clock. This is Francis for three. That's Could the right be guy. the dagger. Oh. No good, and a rebound by Nick Penny but they did run the shot clock all the way down. Howitt now rushing into the front court. Gets it to Marlowe, near side Heesh. Heesh around the high ball screen, lays it up and in, no good. Samuelson the rebound, and he will be fouled. Jump ball is Jump the call, ball. and it's gonna stay with the Pioneers. 31.5 left. Yeah, Rustin, I don't know if you get maybe one more shooter in there for Wheaton, because now Carroll has to foul. But I gotta give Carroll a lot of credit. They have a great fight, they have great spirit, and they've continued just to battle in this game. They did the same last year in just a seven-point loss here at King Arena. Pretty much the same game as Marlowe, a wide-open layup, and a timeout by the Pioneers. 78-71 was the score here last year, and then they just drubbed Wheaton in that game up in Waukesha in the second-to-last game of the year as Wheaton had a shot to make the conference tournament and couldn't quite finish it off. So this is a team in Carroll that comes on the road. They give you the effort. You know you're going to get it coming in. And they've done a nice job. They've had opportunities to mail it in tonight, especially when the lead stretched to 16. But they've come fighting back and just refused to go quietly. And maybe some of that is the Wheaton layoff where Wheaton hasn't been quite as sharp. The turnovers, they haven't handled this full court pressure very well here late. And there was just a little double screen off an underneath play. And then the first screener rolled right back to the ball. Wheaton helped a little too much on the shooter and got a wide open layup underneath. So, and that's again, that's a young team learning how to close out a game. But the positives far outweigh the negatives for Wheaton. Still up seven. You still have the ball under 30 seconds. But it would be great to see Wheaton, you know, really close this game off right, get this back to double digits, and have some confidence going into the North Park game. I mentioned big scoring around the conference. Elijah Henry with 25 to lead Milliken. They're coming back on North Park down to a five-point game with 2.15 to play down in Decatur. 26 for Brady Rose to, read, to lead the Titans to a huge win over Illinois Wesleyan. We mentioned Sorensen for North Central with 28, 19 for, for Henry there for the Cardinals and a balanced effort led by 18 from Thomas for the Redmen. Jason Ireland had 26 for the Blue Jays in their big non-conference win. That's the guy, they had another shot and Peters threw it away. Luke well, was too eager to get rid of the ball there. And now Rusty, now, now this is trouble. This lead down to seven. Uh, and now th this is a game. Carroll going to bounce this one right down to their best man tonight, Joel Heesh. They run Howard off the screen. Howard for three. Short and a foul on the rebound. And if it's Marlowe, I think it's his fifth. I don't know that it is. I think it's Nick Penny, which would be his fourth. It is. That'll be Penny's fourth. And it's going to send Aston Francis to the free throw line. He was crashing the board for the rebound. And you're seeing Aston talk to his teammates now, telling him, don't go over the back on this free throw. He was actually trying to call for some of the guys to get off the free throw line so you don't get a foul, because if Wheaton goes over the back, it's free throws and no time off the clock for Carroll. But Aston is going to have two shots here. Makes the first. He's 8 of 9 at the stripe tonight. Here comes Zach Quam for Eichelberger. So another ball handler, uh, a solid free throw shooter. Wheaton kind of going small here, but they still have Jay Spencer in to guard the basket. And Francis makes the second one. He now has 38. 
So Wheaton's going to go to three and one in the conference as Heesh goes all the way to the bucket and they foul him with 14.5 left. It's either Spencer or Luke Peters. Yeah, they got that on. Looks like it goes against Luke. It it's did go second. against Luke, right? And Luke's got to be—he's just got to be smarter. There we're certainly wasn't a lot of contact. We were surprised in it sub form earlier. You haven't seen much from him on the defensive end tonight. That's really justified closing the game with him tonight here. Right. Um, and again, we just got to let that ball go. You know, give him give him two points, and you can trade twos here. Especially with Heesh, know he's going to the bucket and let him go there. It's down to six. But again, for a young team, a learning experience. How do you close out a, a team in a conference game? And this will help them in the long run. Wow. Wow, a dangerous pass from Francis to Samuelson. Boy, if that gets intercepted, you're in full free fall mode out of the Thunder. I mean, that's tough there, Rusty. You're catching the ball in that deep corner. That's exactly where the defense wants you to catch it. And they're able to get that easy trap. And it's been, it's been a problem with Wheaton catching the ball there. It'd be nice to see them try to get a little different look there so they can get a better, a deeper pass, not in that deep corner. Ricky one for two at the line tonight, but he's 89% on the year, so he makes the first one. And that should just about do it. Pushes that back to a, a three possession game. 95-87 now with 12.6 left. He's gonna run this thing into the front court. And again, he's gonna try to get to the bucket. And timeout taken by the Pioneers. At, twos are nice, but at some point you've got to try for the three. I mean, this is the point of the game where you can't quite keep going to the bucket. If you're Heesh, you've got to get the quick three attempt to at least try to win the transition there. But he does keep it now. It's a two-possession game with 6.7, so I guess that's the big thing. If you can get the turnover, still keep it a two-possession game. Yeah, you had, it has to be. To have any chance, they need to get that down to a two-possession game. Wheaton just needs to get this in. Stay solid. Look at Ricky Samson on the night. Five shots from the field, and he's got 15 points, if that's been updated since the free throws. So what an efficient night. Ricky's having a, a fantastic senior year. Milliken back to within one now in the closing seconds against North Park. 14 seconds left. North Park was looking to secure that first CCAW victory. They led by nine or more for about the last 25 minutes. And now Milliken charging hard down the stretch here at home. So we'll keep you updated on the final there. Illinois Wesleyan just demolished Augustana down at the Shirk Center, winning by 19. North Central by 10 over Carthage, 77-67. Elmhurst by 27 over Edgewood in a non-conference matchup. They had the conference by tonight. If you've been looking for updates on the Wheaton women's team or wondering why the live stat's not working for that game, the Wheaton women were supposed to play at Carthage tonight. There was a partial power outage at the Tarble Center in Kenosha. And so that game has been canceled for tonight and will be played at 5 o'clock tomorrow night in Kenosha. Francis is fouled on the inbound, so he will have a shot at 40 with his two free throws. Nick Penny fouls out of the game tonight with just three points. Two points, excuse me. And Francis can post his second 40-point game of the year with these two free throws. And he's done it on just 22 shots. That's the efficiency. I mean, 7 of 14 from 3, 9 of 10 from the free throw line. First free throw up and good. Seven rebounds, two assists, a steal. You know, this is kind of the big game in the conference we've been waiting for from Aston, and he delivered. 19 turnovers will be the number that I'm sure Mike Shower will bring up first in the, in the practice tomorrow as Francis gets his 40. And it's especially impressive when he missed his first five shots. He's going to leave it. Cleary thought pump fake, now shoots the three. It's good. That'll change the final score. 97-92 the final here. The Thunder move to three and one in the conference. They will be tied with Illinois Wesleyan for first place when they take the floor on Saturday here against North Park. And so you see that you know, Wheaton loses here to Alma in that last game here at King before the break. And they go out west where they're playing a Whitworth team that's seventh in the country, undefeated, 30-game winning streak at home. And it looks like it could really be a, a, a tough road for Wheaton. They find a way to win at Whitworth. They win at George Fox. Now they've won an impressive game here at home against Carroll. And Wheaton's won three games in a row, 9-3 and three on the year, 3-1 and one in the conference. And all the goals for this Wheaton team are right there. All the, all the things they wanted to accomplish are right there. And it was really an impressive game for Wheaton. 
As we are joined here with head coach Mike Schauer after his team's five-point win over Carroll. Coach, I'm sure you're not real happy with the way your team closed that down the stretch, but after a 10-day layoff, a sloppy first 10 minutes to put, come up against a strong effort from Carroll and close out a win tonight. Well, I mean, I was terrified of this game, both because if you follow Carroll and you look at box scores, they, they're very different in the last four, five, six games than they were the first four, five, six games, and, and things have happened on their team that I think is, has allowed them to be a, a much more cohesive and, and offensive-minded team. So I was a little nervous about them offensively, which proved to be the case. But I thought our guys battled. You know, this is kind of the way we played against George Fox, too, right? We're tired. It's hard to have that many days off and be sharp. Um, but at the same time, I thought we cared. I thought we played hard. And we're, we're just such a difficult team to guard. You know, I, I, Lee Fund would be thrilled. This is the way his best teams won. There's a chance Bill Harris never speaks to me again. But uh, I've got to learn to get used to this because this is, this is how we're going to win. And I actually went into this season talking to our team about having to get having to score in the mid 80s for us to win because we were we are so good offensively and obviously pretty ordinary defensively you said after right before the Whitworth game you put your team through maybe the hardest practice of the year they responded with a big win against a ranked team you've now out rebounded your opponents in four straight games what's been the biggest change for your team to really win the toughness statistics in the last four games yeah I think I've been harder on them in practice to be honest with you we've practiced harder and I actually read a quote from Anson Dorrance who if you don't know who that is look it up uh, he's the greatest uh, women's soccer coach in the history of women's soccer and has a quote that just talks about you know sometimes coaches we get a little bit tired of pushing our team to their maximum ability because it's it takes a lot of energy to do that but at some point teams just kind of have to suck it up and deal with it and that really struck me Owen Handy actually sent me that quote before the Whitworth game and I, I put us through a tough practice Candidly, I think I'm just being much more demanding of our team about how our practice habits are, and, and uh, I think we've responded on the glass. It'd be nice if we could actually stop somebody, but but, but we've played well, and we're, we're invested, and that's that's a positive thing. Obviously, Aston was special with 40 tonight on only 22 shots, but then you get balanced scoring underneath them, three more guys in double figures. What, what's going to be the key now moving in with, with a chance to really set yourself up nice in the conference against North Park on Saturday? Yeah, you know the big, the great thing about Aston lately is he has, he really has not taken a, a, a high volume number of shots. He's still scored. He's sharing the ball. I mean, this is this kid is pretty special for those of us who have watched Division Three for a while. When he's at his best and willing, because he's a great passer and willing to share the ball, you know we are we are a really hard team to guard. And then when necessary, he can obviously make a few plays that that nobody else can. But I was really pleased. I thought we got a lot of good stuff from a lot of people today. But I, I like my team. I think we're I think we're invested. I'll use that term again. I think our team is invested and wants to see kind of what we can do with with what we got here. Well, coach, you'll sit atop the, Z, the CCIW going into Saturday's game, and hopefully we'll get a chance to talk to you after another win against North Park on Saturday. Did Augie lose? Lost by 19 to uh, Illinois Wesley. Wow, interesting. So Third a five point lit win here for Wheaton over Carroll, 97-92, led by 40 from Aston Francis. A complete game update will be available on the Wheaton Athletics page, athletics.wheaton.edu. We'll be back here for a CCIW doubleheader here at King Arena with a 5 o'clock women's tip-off followed by a 7 o'clock men's tip-off. Wheaton hosting North Park in both games. For Tim Martin, I'm Rusty Lindsay. Thanks for tuning in to CCIW Basketball here on the Wheaton Thunder Sports Network.